in this video we are going to look at making nitrogen triiodide and this compound here was discovered in 1812 it's been around for a very long time this is the general makeup of it there's one nitrogen atom with three iodine atoms connected to it when it's wet it's fine but when it dries these bonds between the iodine and the nitrogen become unstable and they want to break apart and it takes very little to break them once you break one nitrogen iodine bond here the rest go and the entire amount goes to make our nitrogen triiodide we need iodine crystals elemental iodine which we got from an earlier experiment and liquid ammonia and this can be from a dollar store or walmart it doesn't matter even if it's scented it still works there's two methods i'm going to go over here one is the standard method and the other one is a safer method that's what i'm calling it for the standard method you need two grams of iodine and for every two grams you need 20 milliliters of ammonia you want your iodine crystals to be fine so if they're larger crystals grind them take a glass container and put your fine iodine crystals on the bottom here and pour over that your 20 milliliters of ammonia and let it sit for five minutes once it's sat for about five minutes you want to pour it through a standard filter and filter paper here and the liquid that drips through you can discard you want to save what's in the filter paper and then take your filter paper i know this looks like a gear or a wheel but it's actually the filter paper spread out with your nitrogen triiodide in the middle here and you want to let it dry completely when it does dry completely is when it becomes extremely sensitive the way of making nitrogen triiodide uh, is so sensitive that there are claims that a laser or even alpha particles can set it off and I'm going to try both. For the second method or the safer method as I'm calling it you need a piece of paper toweling and you want to put your iodine crystals in a small pile in the middle here and then you want to just drip your ammonia over the pile of iodine crystals until they're saturated and then stop. Once these crystals are dry you'll find you can actually handle this very carefully but it won't go off until it actually hits a hard object. As the iodine I gathered from the original experiment was only half a gram, 0.5 grams, I'm going to divide it in two piles of 0.25 grams. And if you use this ratio right here, that means we'll only need two and a half milliliters of ammonia for every 0.25 grams. Start by doing the standard method first. I'm grinding my quarter gram here of iodine for the first experiment, which is the standard method. On the left here, I have the ground iodine crystals you just saw me grind. This is the ammonia right here, and these are the unground crystals. So there's 0.25 grams on each side here. I'm going to take my 2.5 milliliters with this pipette here, which I can measure on the side right there. And we're going to cover this iodine right there. That's going to stay for 5 minutes. On the right, I'm going to take and just add a couple drops. This is the safer method, as I've called it. We're going to let the one on the right just dry. I feel like I'm working with a miniature glassware set. Everything's so tiny here, but I'm not working with that much uh, quantity. So, okay, we're going to go ahead and take our uh, mix here of iodine and ammonia. It's been sitting for around five, six minutes. And filter this. You can see on the bottom here, it's a fairly clear liquid maybe browned up just a tiny bit by the iodine. On this piece of paper toweling here, our second method, so to speak, there's a nice pile of iodine here, and I think I'm gonna leave it overnight to dry. While these both are wet, they're safe, this will not explode. I'm gonna pull this out of here now, the filter paper, and just set it on this paper toweling here to help it dry quicker. And again, I'm gonna leave this overnight. This small piece of metal came out of a smoke detector and if you look closely at an angle here you can see that there's kind of a star shape at the very end of this where i'm holding it and inside of that is something called a americium 241 it's a radioactive material it has a half-life of 432 years and it sends off alpha particles it's the main mechanism by which a smoke detector detects smoke and i'm going to use these alpha particles to see if i can't get our nitrogen triiodide to explode I took that piece of metal and taped it to this dowel rod here and I'm going to place it over here in this little setup I have here so that it's pointing down on the nitrogen triiodide. Okay, I'm going to set this down. I measured it so it should end up right over that pile there. Okay. We'll leave it there for a bit. It might take a minute.
after quite some time, nothing's happened. So I'm going to bend this down a bit, which will bring it just a bit closer. As you can see, the nitrogen triiodide did not get set off by the alpha particles. So there may be situations where it does, but it didn't this time. This is a blue laser beam, and it does create some heat. The greatest heat is produced by the violet colored lasers, but I'm going to give this a try next to see if I can get the nitrogen triiodide to blow up. This is not the hottest laser, but let's see what happens. And we have a winner. If you're ever trying to get iodine off of something like just happened to this table, ironically, ammonia works extremely well. You can see it's already clearing up in that one spot. I'll switch it around and clean the rest. This pile of nitrogen triiodide uh, was made through the second method where a pile of iodine was piled up and dripped with ammonia and allowed to immediately soak into the paper toweling here. So because of that, the iodine is not completely saturated with the ammonia and it is a little bit safer because it will not go off with just the slightest touch. I'm gonna go ahead and cut off the uh, paper toweling around here. but this will still explode when it hits hard object. 